Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode on the Origins Survival Avia Edition world. I feel like I always start the episode by jumping off of our little mountain that we're built up on the top of out there. It sounds like there's a cat suffocating somewhere, and I don't know why that's happening. But um, I wanted to switch things up today, and as you can see, and as we discussed in last week's episode, we we're uh, planning to move some villagers and I have things set up to move some villagers. I just did not have time to do this last week and I'm glad that I took a little bit of time to plan out this process a little bit better. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is I've ran a rail cart through here and I've got three layers of carpet on uh, certainly throughout this row and then through most of this row as well with the exception of the one spot where the trap door is and it needs to swing open and that should deter smaller uh, children villagers from running out of this place as they get confused when they walk over here and then just revert back to uh, the other path area. Now to move a villager all I should have to do in theory is put one on the rails Put a minecart here and press this button, though I probably should have preset that minecart beforehand to ensure that they weren't going to run away from me after I have things set up. Now let's see if I can get one of these guys over onto these rails, because villagers are infuriating to work with. And then let's hit that minecart button, and just like that we do have the villager in the mine cart. However, it looks like we have some conflicting uh, pathways. He probably ran into some of his buddies in here because there are a lot of them. I feel like more of them bred in than what I was initially anticipating. Let's try this again, see if this works any better. And it does because he is well on his way over to our first little stall here. And we've got room for a lot of these guys, certainly more than what we currently have placed uh, or available to us in this little uh, house that we've built up for breeding these villagers. But just like that, we've got him situated where I would like him to be. So we're just going to retrieve this uh, little rail here. And I'm going to... I think I'm going to come back with some of these, actually, I think I'll come back with some polished diorite slabs and place one of those right here so I can put that on top of the workstation, kind of lock him in place. I also am gonna need to bring back more uh, diorite stairs as well. So while the day is decently young, let's run back and do that. Actually, just in case, we're going to block him in like that because I should be able to get back before the night time, but that's not a gamble that I'm willing to take in the event of getting caught up with some other project, because I wouldn't like to have to deal with curing a villager before I've had a chance to go to the nether and get some potions to the point where that's something I can do. With the position of the sun in the sky, it looks like we are just going to have enough time to at least get this initial setup taken care of. And the biggest thing that you need to keep in mind when working with villagers under these types of circumstances is um, we've got to remove this block before we do anything else. We're going to remove this one and place the slab, which I should have had preset in my hotbar. We're going to place that slab right there. And then if we break the mine cart that he's in, you saw how he pops up a little bit. You don't want to have any blocks above them. Otherwise, you're going to have issues uh, in retrieving or in having them stay where you would like them to be. So we'll just place this in over the top. That should give him the protection that he needs. And unfortunately, I don't have a way of getting in there and retrieving that mine cart right this very second. Uh, but we'll come back with the trap door so we can grab it um, on the other side of the night here. And then we'll focus on moving some more of these villagers out of that house and into their needed location. All right, so that's all the villagers that I can currently move out of that area. Is it a foolproof system? No, uh, there have definitely been some hitches with it. 
but I do feel like it is functional for what I need it to be. And if I need to make some innovations or improvements to it, there are uh, room for uh, those type of suggestions or alterations. Uh, if you want to feel free to leave those in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, I do have the uh, issue of the gaping hole here where they're mostly safe from harm, but of course uh, baby zombies and other small mobs could find their way into this spot and that's not exactly what I'm hoping to see or have happen. So I'd like to get a couple of workstations set up at least initially so I can start you know trading with these guys and working with them a little bit and I want to have at least three of these guys be librarians I think however librarians have absolutely terrible trade options so I'm going to need to have a couple of uh, good trading options as well. Um, I'm not sure if Fletchers or Farmers... Fletchers are always a good choice. Um, I'm not sure Farmers or some other uh, type of trading villager would be the next best option there. So I'll have to look a little bit into that. But that will not be a today problem. Mainly due to the fact that there is... Well... Um, there's more breeding that needs to be done by the villagers that are still in that little house that we have set up for them. I will at least get the rail ready to go for the next villager that I will inevitably be sending this way. And what are you doing there? I honestly have no idea. You probably crawled out of this little hole, didn't you? Gosh, I hate creepers. But um, even though I'm fairly confident that the plan that I have for preventing baby villagers from leaving this spot is foolproof, uh, or I have confidence that it's at least somewhat functional. I am going to seal off the home, because I can always reinstate these rails since I have a surplus of them uh, when and if I need them. So the next step in our little process here is going to be breeding up some more villagers so we can finish up what's going on over there and we're going to need some food for that of course and bread is the best option for breeding villagers because it requires the least amount of the resource that you use to breed them so I'm gonna have to run up and make a couple of loaves of bread so I can come back and give it to the two villagers that I still have remaining in that house There we are. That's probably going to give me more than what I need because it only takes three bread to breed a singular villager. And let's just make sure. Yep, there he is. A new one has shown up. My job here is done. And the other reason that I wanted to kind of seal that off is because I know that the, the young villagers have had a couple of issues with running out of that little enclosure and that was before I made the adjustment and put the carpet down or the triple layers of carpet but you can never really be sure I think only two layers were really needed but I had the extra carpet to throw in there so I don't think it's that big of a deal now the next item on the agenda is a little bit more tricky and that's because I need a bunch of bookshelves so I can make lecterns to train up some of the librarians. However, because of the dietary restrictions of the avian class, I haven't had a need to set up farms for cows, mainly because I can't use the meat or sheep or pigs or any of those other ones. But cows are also one of the better sources of leather that don't make me feel like I'm an absolute monster because the other option is horses, and I don't like just killing horses for seemingly no reason. Despite the fact that, yes, I know that there is quite a few right here next to the little house that we've built. I would like to avoid that where possible. Now I'm going to make three lecterns, at least initially. 
So I need to find four more pieces of leather. And we got it. So I'll leave the rest of these cows alone because technically they didn't do anything to deserve that. Now I've got 13 pieces of beef that I will never use. But I've just got to figure out what I really want to do with. And I don't think that it's worth setting up a butcher. Mainly because I setting up farms for animals that I can't consume seems counterintuitive. And I think the exchange rates are fairly poor. Like uh, more akin to what you would see with... Uh, some of the other trades, particularly like the farmer and other things. And until I've made my way over to the nether, if I do it at all, I don't know that there's going to be much of a need for uh, curing villagers to lower their trade rates. The other thing that's kind of crazy with this uh, little breeder that we've set up is look at all these iron golems that are now roaming around this little village. I it just raised the overhead and this place is very well protected which just means that i've got to be on my extremely best behavior because accidentally hitting one of those guys is a death sentence when it's just one of them when there's multiple you're really asking for trouble all right let's have the negotiations begin here let's lay out these lecterns and see if these guys give me anything good. You just sell bookshelves and paper. You've got mending. It's at a bit of a steep price. But I will take it where I can get it for now. Actually, because I know that that price can be done better, I am going to take it. Mainly because since I'm using three of them initially here, I have a pretty good feeling that I can get something at a better price from one of these other guys as I you know, give them their options of, or sift through the options of what they're willing to offer. There we are. That's a pretty good low rate for a mending trade. Now, I've got to get something so I can lock that in. And if I can get my hand on nine emeralds, that'll be good. Um, these other two, I'm going to have to come back and negotiate with, but I'm going to make a fletching table, turn this guy into a fletcher, so I can start trading some sticks and then hopefully these trades don't change so I don't have to go through the rigmarole of getting mending on something again. Of course, there's other trades that I still want to get as well, but priorities. Okay, can't get the mending trade, but I can buy a bookshelf. And it's fine that he sells bookshelves because that's going to give me books that I will need to make those trades. And then I can get the mending that, well, exists there. And I probably will come back around and do some of these uh, uh, spruce trap doors up in front. Mainly because that will allow them to be fully protected from even the narrowest margin of... Uh, opponents that could come around. I'm not overly concerned, but every little extra bit of protection does indeed help. I don't know what I want to do with you just yet, so I'm just going to put that there. And I'll come back with some trapdoors that I can just spring up in front of these guys, and you'll be good for uh, some initial trades, and if I need uh, anything archery related, because I haven't really done a whole lot with that as of yet. But I have done a bunch of uh, work off camera here. I don't want the episode to drag on a whole lot. I apologize if things were a little bit shorter today, but there's a lot of development I need to put into this world between today and the next episode uh, next week. So I hope that even though it was a more productive episode than what it's been uh, in the past, it makes up for that for sure. Let me know what you're thinking of the new update in the comments down below. I'm excited to hopefully be able to port uh, this mod over into the most recent version uh, once it's more fully fleshed out. And keep an eye on the channel for a 1.17 challenge type 
experience that I will be undergoing here in the next couple of weeks. Thanks again for your time, everyone. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.